Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to the video. This is another paid request, this time from Matthew. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for How to Make a Monster from 2001. And this is a time when Stan Winston, who's still with us, he was producing, and his team were doing effects for these remakes. It was a series of films that were remakes of these 1950s movies. And they were pretty much made for cable, I think Cinemax is where they debuted. I could be wrong, but I think it was Cinemax. And there was Earth vs. the Spider, She-Creature... Um, quite a few of these remakes, again, of these older sci-fi films. And, like I said, Stan Winston was a producer. His team helped work on the, the makeup effects, which became the star of these remakes. And I say remakes, and the plots can, the, of them can be fairly different. Sometimes, maybe the similarity is just the title. Does I think the original How to Make a Monster dealt with like a wax museum or something? But this is a computer game. Now it stars Stephen Culp who was the a-hole reporter in Jason Goes to Hell. I thought he did a good job in it. Clea Duvall, which man, I haven't seen her in a long time. I don't know what happened to her, but she was in The Faculty, she was in Go interrupted she was in uh, John Carper's Ghost of Mars uh, she was definitely the best part of this movie she did a really good job as this nice intern you have Tyler Maine who was Sabretooth in the first X-Men and then he would go on to do other stuff Julie Strain she makes a quick appearance in this and her two tatas. Pretty much this game is being made called Evolution. Um, and the game sucks. And the kids are laughing at the monsters. And they're going, well crap. This monster ain't going to work. One of the kids calls it, this is like a monster. Like a Sesame Street. It's like a Sesame Street rejet. So Colleen Tamp which she's done in quite a few films. She was in, I think, Dire with a Vengeance and, and other movies, I believe. She's like, we need to fix this game. We need to fix this game. We need to we fire these other programmers. We need some new people. So Stephen Culp says, I got three people. I got this guy named Solomon who can work on the AI. I got this guy named Hardcore, played by Tyler Maine. He's a weapons expert, and he does other stuff. And then I have this guy named Bug. I think the actor's name is Jason Marsden. He can work on the, the sound and the music. Now granted, right there you're going, wait a minute. It's going to take three people, three to four weeks, to finish a game? Right there, you go, okay, these guys who made the film, they don't know how video games work. <laughs> You're not going to have three fucking people, each one doing one thing in order to fix an entire fucking game. But <laughs> So yeah, if you, if you know a bit about video games, you just say this film is very dated, in which people who made this know nothing about video games. I mean, the director is a guy who did the film Swimming with Sharks. With Kevin Spacey. And he was like friends with Robert Rodriguez. And Robert Rodriguez told him. Hey George. The director's name is George. Hey you know you should try making films on your own. So he did. So with Sharks got some critical praise. But then he did a couple films and TV. Including this. And it's like yeah it takes a lot more than three people. So then those three. With Stephen Culp watching. Clea Duvall's the intern, gets food, coffee, they treat her like crap, and she's very kind. And I thought Clea was very natural, she was easy to feel sympathy for. 
and I thought, again, she was the best actor in the film. So the three are going to work on this, and there's an incentive that if you're able to make the monster stare, you get a $1 million bonus. And the other acting, it's very over-the-top. It's very, like, trying to be stereotypical, where Bud is the stereotypical nerd who, I can't eat that cookie, uh, I can't handle chocolate chip. Do you have this type of cookie? My allergies and the way he talks and the way he's like doesn't know how to talk to people and Tyler Maine is his jock who's always angry. He feels like he's always got roid rage and he's using his weapons. Why he needs all these real weapons there? And you think maybe to fight the monster later on. That doesn't even come to play. <laughs> well, that's not true. There's at the very end someone else uses it a sword. So I just it does come into play there, so that's not true. But he's very like gun-ho and your PFD program for damage. Like Tower Main it offers him to do something a bit different than just you know Sabretooth or you know Michael Myers or, or anything of the sort. It's allowing him to you know act a little bit but at the same time kind of showcases why he doesn't act like why he doesn't do a lot of jobs perhaps for that this is not his strongest suit and Solomon is doing the AI he has this almost pontificating air superiority to him like it is very over the top very you just say stereotypical cliche it's not really Well, I don't know if you're... You're not really supposed to like them. So I was going to say they're not really likable, but you're not really supposed to. But this is... It's not fine acting, I would say that. And there's a part that they have the suit, a tracking suit, and they get Julie Strain to come in to do movements on it. And Julie Strain, for those who don't know, uh, before she passed away, she was married to Kevin Eastman. She worked with Heavy Metal magazine. She was the star of the sequel, Heavy Metal, two, uh, Heavy Metal 2000. The look of the character, that that was Julie Strain. She would be in quite a few of these Andy Sedaris movies. <clears throat> and you get to see her titties, her tatas, who, who goose, goose, goose eggs. And the three guys try to tell her to jump and move around and... Really just there for the titties, which, I mean, I guess I can't complain about that. And then she leaves, so, okay, because lightning hits the place. At kind of like Killbots in Choppy Mall, lightning hits it, and the tracking suit comes alive, which is a very... I'm like, really? The tracking suit comes alive? And also, it doesn't help that nowadays we've seen so many behind-the-scenes features on movies. We know what a tracking suit looks like, and it will look nothing like this. So, and also when you look into the game, it looks like a really crappy game. Like, no one would like this game. This game would not make any money. They would laugh at it. It's the type of effects you would see before in, like, Lawnmower Man. Like that type of VR type of effects. It just looks really daft. Really shitty. Really cheap. Uh, it's 2001 this came out. And I mean how Doom for Atari Jaguar or whatever looked better than this. I mean it looked really bad. I'm like who the hell would like this game? It was a shitty first person shooter that you're killing fucking Pikachu's. It was like a shitty shooter where you're killing Pikachu's. And sorry about the background noise. There's people outside going around. Uh, left the TV on. Because I'm an idiot. There's more background noise. People just do whatever they want over here. Either the guys and neighbors roosters. Or they just like to walk around. And the walls are as thin as a fucking... 
Smurfs dick. Anyway. Again, this shitty first person shooter, you're killing a bunch of... They look like Pikachu from Pokemon. They look just like him. I don't know how else they explain it. Now, they try to incorporate this theme that maybe could have been a more interesting movie where she's... They said the intern, <coughs> Clay Duvall, is very nice and Stephen Culp keeps talking to her about how it's, you know, being nice is not a luxury you can afford. You know, if you put trust into good and honesty, you're going to lose. And just, you know, these other people talking about how greed wins overall, and they're mocking Clea Duvall, why do you keep feeding that fish? You know, because there's a fish tank in the big main room that they're doing their research in. And Stephen Culp... Like, Stephen Culp and Clea Duvall, they actually worked well together. Like, those were the two better actors in the movie. Compared to the three over the top... That's the th weird thing. Stephen Culp and Clea Duvall are actually being rather good. Like, they have a conversation in a bar about... Hey, you don't know how... If I'm nice. You don't know who I truly am. And Clea Duvall, oh, come on, you seem like a decent guy. Like, they're being very natural in the rapport. And Stephen Culp and Clea... They worked well with each other. Then on the flip side, you have these three very over-the-top personalities that it feels like there's a conflicting nature of what the film wants to be. It wants to be this B-movie goof, but then it wants to be this as well. <coughs> and then the... Because of the lightning, the tracking suits alive, the death scenes leaves a lot to be desired too. That's another issue with the film. Does OT? Okay, I know I'm 12 minutes in. Overall, the movie, before I get deeper, I can't say I, there's aspects I like about it. Is that the worst scene I've seen? I don't know if this would be a rant, but it's just it's it's a lot of flaws to it. The sets look cheap. They look very cheap. I mean, the studio that they're in, they're, there's nothing that state-of-the-art about it. I didn't... If you know anything about video game making, this will probably blow your head up. Like, what the fuck are they doing? They don't know shit. And... Uh, like I said the acting is 50-50. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. The gore is minuscule. Because the death scenes, for the most part, are off camera. The one guy, Solomon, gets dragged. And you see blood hit. You don't really see much of anything, naturally. He just gets dragged away. When Tyler Maine dies, he gets pulled down. You see a knife come down and blood splatter the window. Um, spoiler alert. Sorry, spoilers. So start now, Spoilers. Heavy spoilers. Bug. Uh, they tried to give him a bit of a character moment where he's talking to Clea and he's like, will you kiss this face? And she goes, maybe. And he's like, I'm tired of being a maybe. I wish there was more of that like development other than just one scene. And then it comes back where the monster asks, are you ready to die? Maybe. And he sees a line, a gas pipeline. Definitely, maybe. Tr sacrifices himself, but it doesn't do any good, so his self-sacrifice is pointless. So that makes that a bit empty of a scene. Because it didn't result in anything. The look of the monster is cool. And that's kind of the, I think, if you watch these Cinemax remakes of these older movies... That's the primary function of enjoyment is to see what Stan Winston's group will do next. And the tracking suit, when it killed Solomon, it like took his face, but it had replaced his eyes. It's kind of like the Jamie Lee Curtis film Virus, or way in the 80s, Moon Trap, with Walter Koenig and Bruce Campbell. Um, it's kind of that theme, whereas man machine using man for body parts um, 
And there's a couple cool shots of that. And then when the monster's all decked out, where it's this robotic nature and these armor, it's like a weird computer, like, Viking thing. I think it looks cool, but at the same time, I'm like, well, it kind of looks like something Buffy the Vampire Slayer would fight on the TV show. So I enjoy it because I'm a sucker for practical effects. I wouldn't call it scary or creepy, but uh, yeah, I'm waiting for Buffy or Kevin Sorbo's Hercules to come out and fight it. <laughs> One or the other. For a made-for-table film, I thought it looked pretty decent, but you don't really see enough of it. Because at times, it'll come back to the video game version of it. Just something about the video game version. If you defeat the game, they'll defeat the thing in real life. And that's why, spoiler, cut in the head, cut in... Stephen Cole is going to take the disc. He's working for another company. He fucks people over. He said, hey, I, he was going to leave her behind. So Clea wounds him. The only big piece of gore is when the monster kills Stephen Culp. When it pops up, there's the the head with a bit of spine. And then Clea puts this visor on so she can see the monster in VR. But at the same time, she's in the same room as the monster. So I get the idea that you have to win the game in order to beat the monster. But at the same time... The monster's in the same room. <clears throat> so, would you really still need the visor? Like, the monster's right there. Do you still need the visor to do that? It's almost as if they did that. Strictly to hide. Because that's when the sword play comes into. And I bet Clea Duvall did not know shit about sword play. So I'm guessing they went, okay, when you put these on, you switch it with the stunt double. And then you get someone that kind of looks like her, but we've hit her most of her face. And so she does the sword fight. And then when you're done, you take it off. I think that's the only reason they really had that become a thing. Because again, you're physically with the monster face to face where you could have the fight. And in spoilers, last time I'll say that, I get what the director was doing with the t with the movie where the thing that she was feeding, the thing that she was taking care of, all the fish kills them so that the water comes down <clears throat> and it fries the monster. And then she grabbed the disc and went to Colleen Camp and said, hey, you know what? I want some stuff out of this. And now she's got her own company. And now she's the boss. And you have this intern. I'm just trying to be nice. And Clea says don't be nice. But I do think at least Clea Duvall. Played that scene very well. Saying lines like. The world is not nice. It's complicated. It's messy. Bad wins out every time. I do think she played the scene very well. Well, as she's saying it, there's a bit of... You see a bit of humanity in her face. It's that... She doesn't play a one-note mustache-twirling villain. Like, as she's saying it, she's saying a softer tone to the intern. Like, listen, this is what I learned, and this and that. And the whole point of the title is... How to make a monster... Not just the video game monster, but how to turn this intern into a monster. Where she was very nice and kind, but now she is this evil businesswoman that you have to be, you have to do that in order to survive, otherwise you're a victim. Because they also added in, almost too briefly, that... When they were running away, she drops down and Stephen Culp sees bruises on her arm. And before we saw that, her boyfriend was pounding the door, calling her names. And then he leaves. And at one point she says, my boyfriend actually 
my ex-boyfriend, like, now she's done with him. You get the idea that that boyfriend had abused her. And it seems like stuff that... I can't appreciate what the director is trying to do, but it still comes off as either clunky or a bit more finesse could have been put into that. Also, it's a bit weird that the abusive boyfriend is Danny Masterson from that 70s show. Uh, <laughs> just look up Danny Masterson and the trouble he's got into. And then you'll know why, in retrospect, that may, might have been a bad idea. Or maybe some would say perfect casting. <clears throat> Overall, I can appreciate the whole double meaning of the title and trying to go a little bit extra for that. Although, when people watch this, they're trying to watch this a fun B movie and I'm not sure if people wanted to see that extra portion put into the plot and if you don't do that then you'd have to have a bit more finesse to it again this is you put into the same movie as Tyler Maine's character called Hardcore and a character named Bug I can't say I'm a big fan of the film. I like some of the actors, like I mentioned, Stephen Culp Clea. I like some of the suit that you see. The idea reminds me a bit of Moontrap Virus, that type of man-machine melding. I don't see think you see enough of it. By the time it really gets going, it's like 40, 50 minutes in. Uh, instead, you got, you got a couple cheap sets, some overacting by the three programmers... Some clunky dialogue. PFD program for damage. When you look into the game, peop it's like the makers of the film don't know how video games work. They don't know how making video games work. It's, it is a fairly dated movie, even for 2001, with the way the video game looks, the way the tracking suit looks, all that stuff. All three programmers don't take f three, four weeks to make a game. I'm like, yeah, okay. Or fix a game. And like I said, the death scenes, why are the death scenes so tame? Why is most of them cut away? I did like one guy dragged under a table, one guy dragged under and killed off screen, one guy sacrifices himself, explosion cut away. Um, I... Should be a lot more like crazy death scenes so you got Stan Winston's company working on it. Have the machine, I don't know, punch holes through people or rip faces off, rip heads off. Well, it does that. Kind of like you see it, you hear it, and then the reveal. But let's see it rip the head off in the same shot. You know, like Dead Alive did that back in the, you know, the 90s. Um, again, other than the two lead performances and other than a couple of Stan Winston bits of work, it's a short film. It's under 90 minutes. If you like monster sci-fi movies, maybe to give it a look. But, I mean... It's not a film I would ever watch again. It's not a film I would give high praise to. At best, it would give maybe two out of five stars. At best. Probably at best two out of five. One for the two actors and the other star for some of the Stan Winston company's monster work. Which again, that gets hindered when it keeps coming back to the shitty video game footage. Maybe not as quite as bad as Uva Bold did in House of the Dead, but still. So. Take that for you, well. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.